Hello, everyone. My name is Anjali Chandrasekhar, and I'm presenting to you from Cupertino, California. I worked with my mentor, Michaela, to write a literature review on different treatments for eczema. I chose to research this topic because I've dealt with eczema my whole life, and a big thing I've struggled with was finding treatments that worked for me. So I wanted to put together a bunch of treatments to show people which has the best success. To begin, a quick overview of what I'll dive into today. I'll go into the causes of eczema, a quick note about antibiotic resistance, and then I'll move into antibiotic treatments, steroid treatments, and a non-topical alternative. So the most common cause of eczema is genetics. One can be more likely to develop eczema if they have family members who struggle with a, any form of atopic dermatitis. Another known factor is having an overactive immune system. The skin becomes inflamed or flares up when an allergen or irritant from outside or inside the body activates the immune system. And then last but definitely not least, the environment plays a big role in how severe one's eczema is. Cold weather on one hand can cause dry flaky skin and on the other hand, extreme heat can cause itchiness. Now, before we get into these treatments, it's important to keep in mind the idea of antimicrobial resistance, which occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites stop responding to antimicrobial medications, and this typically starts due to the overuse of medications. So it's important to regulate one's treatment and follow the doctor's instructions to avoid this type of resistance. Now, moving into the bulk of my review, the treatments. There were two antibiotic treatments that I researched, topical mupirocin and oral floxacillin. In the trial with topical mupirocin, 49 patients with atopic dermatitis were split into two groups. One received the drug and one received the placebo. The results demonstrated that topical mupirocin can reduce staphylococcus aureus colonization, which is a frequent bacterium in patients with eczema. This resulted in temporarily improved clinical ratings. Next, the trial with oral floxacillin resulted in no discernible change in the clinical score in the following four weeks of treatment. The third treatment I looked into was topical steroids. One trial experimented with combination therapy versus direct steroids. It surveyed 123 children and 204 adults with atopic dermatitis. One group received a combination of antibiotics and steroids, which were mupirocin plus hydrocortisone butyrate in this case, and the other group received just steroids. After about seven days of treatment, the S. aureus colonization significantly decreased in both groups. However, the combination therapy improved bacterial eradication. Finally, I looked into non-topical alternatives, such as a bath additive. In a trial with 483 children over a period of 12 months, the reaction to addition of bath additives to one's daily regimen was observed, and researchers found this to have no significant effect. To conclude, here were my findings. Combination therapy and individual application successfully reduced S. aureus in patients with AD for short-term periods. After about three to four weeks, one's skin generally regressed to its pre-treatment state. And a last note is that it's important to remember that everybody's bodies react differently to different treatments. So finding a treatment regimen that works best for one's condition is absolutely key. Thank you for listening, everyone.